Check in your Bible, if you will, to the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1. Jonah, the great example of a backslider that ran from God, and God dealt with him. Jonah chapter 1, if you will. I just remind you, in case I, I don't think anybody is just totally, you know, uh, lacking in knowledge, God called Jonah, said go to Nineveh, and that wicked city, you cry against it, Jonah said, nope, I'm not going. He rose up to flee in verse 3, and uh, he took off. But I want you to look at verse 4. The Bible said, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, every man unto his God, cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said to them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which he hath made, uh, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Uh, you know, Jonah decided that he could just take off and run. Right. He decided, I don't have to do what God wants me to do and what he's called me to do. Instead, I'll do that. You know, I think of that. I, I think today a lot of people run for their health, you know, right. and a lot of people run for fun. I run only if the guy that's chasing me is really big, all right? Uh, but uh, a lot of people run for different reasons. Now, Jonah's run was not fun in any way. Oh, no. Just not fun in any way. Running from God's always a mistake always a mistake. It always leads to more trouble than you can imagine you could ever contemplate happening. And I, I preached to you last week on the folly of fleeing. Tonight what I want to do is I want to look at what happens when you run. So tonight I want to preach to you on the subject, the run is not fun. The run is not fun. I see these signs everywhere they having a fun run. They'll run a 5K, you know, it's just for fun. And I, I think there's so many more ways to have a lot more fun. But uh, those people that do that, they enjoy it, and that's right. fine. Yeah. But I want you to see tonight when it's running from God, the run's not fun, all right? right. Just a few things that will take place. Number one, the calm will be swept away. The calm will be swept away. Look there in verse 4. The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Mm -hmm. There was a mighty tempest. Uh, listen, a lot of people today think, well, the key is... You know, when you get under pressure or you, something's going on, well, let's just run. Let's just run. Right. That hadn't worked too well for Jonah. Right. We get the idea, well, we'll run. We can escape one situation and go to another place. But Jonah was running from the call of God, and what had been a calm day degenerated quickly into a mighty tempest, right. a tempest that was so bad the Bible tells us that they were concerned that the ship itself was going to break up, all right? Now, uh, we look at that and we think of ships today and we think that couldn't happen, but it even can happen in our day. It's right. possible for that to take place. Yeah. Hey, what we need to realize is our sin is always going to trouble the waters of our life. Yes, our sin will always trouble the waters. Notice the Bible said this storm was sent from God. The Lord sent out a great wind. The Lord sent it. This wasn't... This wasn't a natural occurrence, this supernatural. Amen. This was the work of God that sent it. Hey, life really gets tough when it's, it's a result of your bad decisions. Right. Uh -huh. When we decide to make a decision, I'm not going to do what God says. I'm going to do what I want to do. Life can really, really get tough when that takes place. And, and uh, hey, it can get tough enough just when we make bad decisions. But right. when we decide we're going to completely disobey God, 
it can bring down a storm of epic proportion upon us. And it did here. Uh, folks, God has no problem controlling the weather. No problem controlling the weather. He controls the circumstances that come our way. God doesn't have to send a storm. He can send circumstances our way. And uh, we think, well, I never thought that would happen. Yeah, but God was in it. God was in it. A lot of times people say, well, I, I, didn't, I had no idea if I did that that this would happen. Well, God saw to it that it happened. Right. God saw to it that it happened. And uh, whatever it might be, if he needs to make your car break down, he can make your car break down. Amen. All right, he can do that. If he needs to break your health, he can break your health. Right. If he needs to send a storm across your path, he can send a storm across your path. Uh, whatever it is, there's no challenge to God to do that. And they need to realize that, hey, when we decide to run from God's call and run from obeying God, then the calm is going to be swept away in our life. Oh, yeah. You think, well, it's kind of turmoil now. Wait till you start running from God. Amen. Amen. Wait until you turn your back on Him. But not only is the calm swept away, but don't you see there in verse 5, the crew is shaken. Oh, yeah. The crew is shaken. Hey, these were mariners. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, they, these weren't landlubbers. Nope. These were mariners. Uh, here's from some folks that uh, they were used to sailing. Right. They were used to being in storm. Look, if you're going to be a sailor, you got to expect to be in a storm. Oh, Just got to expect sure. to be in a storm. I, uh, my son, uh, you know, he uh, used to watch that uh, world, what world's deadliest catch, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, so I've watched some of that, and you, you get in there and you get those storms, and you see those boats, man, taking those waves. Yeah. And I nearly get seasick in my recliner, all right? Uh, I mean, it's bad stuff. Those, those waves are, you know, smashing and uh, rocking that boat. And I'm thinking, boy, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. Wouldn't want to be in that. And, and occasionally, you can see those fellows that spent years involved in that in a very dangerous uh, activity. You can see the concern in them because the storm is such. Uh, you know, our, our big misconception is here. We get the idea, if I disobey God and I run from God, it's only going to affect me. Oh, yeah. Now I'll tell you what, that's not true. No, sir. No, you know, sir. chances are that was not the only ship on that sea. That was probably not the only ship on that sea. Jonah wasn't by himself in that boat. You don't go through life by your lonesome, okay? You just don't go through life by yourself. When you decide that you're going to disobey God, that sin begins to ripple out in every direction. Amen. It's not just centered on you, okay? It, it, it's got some ripples that affect other people. You can compare it to a snowball rolling down a, a, a hill. It's going to pick up everything it can as it goes along. It'll, uh, it gets big enough, it'll knock down everything in its path. Hey, our sin affects more than ourselves. Hey, it'll affect your spouse. It'll affect your parents. It'll affect your children. It'll affect your neighbors. Have you ever noticed how many innocent people get hurt because of the sin of one person? Innocent people get hurt. Innocent people suffer. How many times have we heard on on the news of somebody out drunk driving and they get on the wrong side of the freeway, going the wrong way, and they have a head-on collision. It's amazing how many times the people who are killed is not the drunk. It's the people he runs into. Hey, our sin, it, 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 it just goes out, all right? Here, it wasn't just Jonah. Here's the crew. They're on the ship. That ship, if it went down, it wasn't just going to be Jonah going to the bottom. It was going to be all the fellows on that ship with Jonah. And the Bible tells us they were scared, all right? Uh, that's not easy thing to do to a bunch of seasoned sailors. But it goes even beyond that. They were so scared they were praying. That's not the thing we normally think of when we think of sailors. That's not the thing that's talked about the most is, hey, those sailors are a praying bunch. No, not normally, all right? Not normally. Hey, uh, boy, this was something that was so serious that it even had those sailors. The Bible said every man praying unto his God. Everyone said, man, you've got to have some help. I don't know about you thank God for the privilege of prayer, but the problem is 
Uh, we're to pray without ceasing, not just when we're cornered and when we're scared. We're to pray all the time. We're, we're to pray continually. We're to continually let our requests be made known unto God. But here there's a situation where uh, folks were praying, but the guy that should have known how to pray wasn't praying. He wasn't praying. But these fellows were so scared, they were lightening the load. They're going into that ship and they're taking stuff and saying, we want everything off of here that we can get off of here because we want to lighten this ship so maybe it won't break up, maybe it won't sink, we want to get rid of it. You know, uh, there comes a time maybe when all your valuables are worthless. Right, amen. Now, you, if you've heard the news, you had to hear the Kardashian who was oh, robbed of yeah. all of those, that jewelry, you know. Right. Now, I won't say that. All right, I'll, I'll just go ahead with this. I, I've got a feeling, okay, I've got a feeling that when those fellows came in with uh, guns and they trained them on her, I got a feeling those jewels weren't worth that much to her right that moment. Right. They just weren't worth that much. And probably more than likely, if she could had not been bound and gagged, she would have said, take whatever you want. Oh, yeah. You can have it all. all right. By the way, it's kind of a goofy thing to say, isn't it, when you're at gunpoint? You're going to tell them, hey, you can't take that? Oh, yeah. right. Probably not a smart thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Here these sailors are in danger of sinking. They're saying, we get rid of it. We're going to get rid of it. Comes a time maybe when all the valuables that we've got in this world are absolutely worthless. Worthless. Hey, you can be the richest uh, individual in this world, but all the money you've got won't buy you an extra minute of time to live. Just can't do it. Can't do it. These fellows, they were willing to give everything for their life. Everything for their life. I want you to see that, all right? The calm had been swept away. Hey, the crew was shaken. Why? Because Jonah decided to run. Because he decided to run. Then if you will, look at the last part of verse 5. The Bible said, but Jonah was going down in the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Hey, the cause of all of this was sleeping. Here he is. The man that caused it all, he's sleeping. Right. You know, sometimes it's amazing what people can sleep through. It's amazing what people can sleep through. And then it's amazing how little it takes to wake them up. Right. I was telling the kids in school, man, when we were young, my brother and I, if we came in late, you know, and we were out and uh, we always had a curfew. Dad had a time we were supposed to be in. And, and if we were past that time, we never could slip in the house without Dad's voice. Right. Voice. You know, and, and we, we knew we were in trouble. But the amazing thing is, I remember I got married, and after I was married, and I had to go back to their house. One time I was going on vacation, and I don't remember now the details as to why of it, but that morning we left, early that morning, I had to go back to their house, and I had to go through the garage, you know, open the garage, clank, 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 clank you know, that deal go in, go into the kitchen, it was dark, turned the light on, and I had to get something, came out, turned the light off, came out, the garage door went down, left, Dad never woke up. <laughs> I thought, why couldn't you have slept that good when we were younger, all right? Just why couldn't you have slept that good when we were younger? But it's amazing sometimes, though, what people can sleep through. I tell you what, I'm afraid a lot of God's people, they were asleep spiritually. Just absolutely asleep. We're asleep as to what's going on in our nation. We're, we're sleeping through elections. We're sleeping through changing values. And it's almost like, well, no big deal. And oh, well, hey, the world's headed for destruction. And so many are spiritually asleep. Just, just turned off. They're out, okay? We're, we're headed off the precipice, all right? But let me say this to you. Just because you can sleep doesn't mean everything is all right. Amen. Okay? Jonah was sound asleep, but that didn't mean everything was okay. 
That didn't mean, well, hey, he had a clear conscience. Let me say this. The Bible in Psalms uh, 127 verse 2 says, He giveth his beloved sleep. That's our Lord. Right. But I'll tell you, I believe the old devil can make you unconscious sometimes too. All right? Sure. He can see to it that you're unconscious as to what's going on. Jonah was asleep. He was the one causing all the problem, yet he's <laughs> sleeping. But everything was not all right. Some people say, well, everything must be okay, man. I'm sleeping like a baby. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean things are okay. Just means you're sleeping. Just means you're sleeping. But wait a minute, that's not the end. If you will look in verse 6, the Bible said, Here's the shipmaster came to him and said, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. Mm -hmm. Here the chief was searching. Here's the man, the chief on the ship, the head guy of the ship. He's come along. I don't know for sure what he's doing. I can't swear to you that he was coming looking for Jonah. The Bible doesn't tell us that. Right. I don't, I don't think they were on deck counting heads going, hey, where's that guy that's the passenger? No. But for whatever reason, maybe he was going down looking for something else to throw overboard. Yeah, probably, yeah. So we get rid of something else. But he finds Jonah. Here's Jonah. Jonah's fast asleep. he got no problem. I mean, he is, whatever the reason, he's searching. He found Jonah. Right. Boy, isn't it bad when it takes the world to wake up the child of God and remind him of what he needs to do? You talking about a pitiful shape spiritually. Here's Jonah, the prophet of God. The man that should have been praying. And here's this more than likely lost sailor coming in and said, Hey man, you need to pray. You need to pray. Folks, listen, that's our responsibility. Tell you, it's our responsibility to pray for this country. Right the last time I looked in the Bible, the Bible talks about us being salt and light. Okay? It's not the responsibility of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Libertarian Party, or whatever other parties are out there. It's not their responsibility. It's our responsibility. That's our job. But yet so many of God's people today, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about preaching Sunday morning of being at ease in Zion. I really, I'm beginning to think that's a great problem. Uh, you know, what the answer is to the problem in our nation today. Hey, God's people. It's God's people. Remember, Sodom could have been spared if there had been a few more righteous people there. It would have only taken ten righteous people to spare the city of Sodom. But there weren't ten there. Hey, you look at that situation, what a mess. What a mess. Now, Lot lived there a long time, but he'd never, never spread his faith to anybody else. Never done the job that he should have done. Hey, listen, I'll be honest with you. That's us. That's a problem with God's people today. So many. We get out, they're out last night knocking on doors. I'm continually running in people to tell me I am a Christian. I go to church. I'm very faithful in my church. Boy, I sure am glad you're doing this. Amen. Why are we out here by ourselves? Why is it of all the churches across the metroplex, why is it just a handful that are out in the highways and the byways and the hedges trying to reach people? Why is it just a relative handful Man, there's thousands and thousands of churches all across the metroplex. The truth of the matter is the cults are doing more than right. most of the ones that profess to be Christians. Of course, now the cults profess to be Christian, but that's another subject. All right. Hey, listen, it's our job. It's our responsibility. The only hope for this whole world is the faithful child of God. Yes, sir. That's the only hope. That is it. It's not in the president. It, it, it's not in the prime minister. It's not in the king. It's not in anybody. It's in the child of God being faithful to do what God wants us to do. But here we are. The chief was searching. And boy, I want you to see if you would in verse 7. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let's cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. This casting of lots, okay, uh, 
it, it was done, you know, is used in Old Testament times a good deal. You, you read about it a lot. They right. used these articles. It could have been pebbles. It could have been wood. It could have been pieces of bone, pieces of wood. But they used it, and they would seek to find out the truth. Now, you say, why don't we do that? The one reason we've got the Bible that gives us the will of God. Right. We don't have to depend upon anything else, all right? Amen. Well, what Jonah was about to find out, uh, the culprit was about to be seen. Right. You see, regardless of how far you run or how fast you run, you cannot escape the consequences of your failure to obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. You'll never run that far and you'll never run that fast. Eventually, your guilt is going to be revealed. Amen. But it's pretty tough when the world has to expose the Christian as a rebel. Amen. Amen. Here's these fellows here, and they say, well, it's this, this passenger we've got. It's him. Right. He's the one. But I want you to look, if you will. They squeeze a confession out of Jonah. He said to them, all right, they, they began to ask him all these questions in verse 8. Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? Whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? Right. Interesting questions. Right. You know, understand where you're from, you know, and uh, your people, but what's your occupation? Yeah. Why would that matter? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Why would that matter what the occupation is, except right. for the fact Jonah was a prophet of God? Right. Yeah. right. Interesting that they would ask that kind of question. Uh -huh. Amen. And all of the questions they come at him with, we find verse 9. He said, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. In my Bible, I've got it written in. Oh, really? <laughs> right. He didn't right. act like he feared the Lord, did he? No. I'll tell you, if you really fear God, you don't run from God. You don't run from the call of God. If you really fear Him, that's not what you do. Here's Jonah. His confession is, is, is getting squeezed out of him, right? Hey, not a confession to God. All right, Lord, I've sinned. I've done wrong. wasn't a confession to get right. It was just an admission of who He was, what He was, and what He'd done. Right, right. But not, Lord, I'm sorry for it. No. No. Would you forgive me? Amen. I just say to you, I, obviously right then he didn't fear God enough. No. You know, like a huge number of Christians today, I fear their Christianity doesn't run very deep. Amen. Doesn't run very deep. Mom and I were talking today at lunch. Most of the kids had finished eating and I was sitting there and she, she, she mentioned some folks that are members of this church and she said, you know, I don't understand. I can't understand why they don't come. And I just looked at her and I said, you know what? I don't either. Right. I don't understand why a person that tells you, hey, I'm a child of God. I, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I'm a member of the church, but I just don't go to church. Amen. I don't understand that. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but y'all don't look miserable right now, okay, are you? Anybody here saying, let's go, would you hurry up? I need to get home, all right? <laughs> you know, I, I need you to get done. And I, I enjoy being in the house of God. Amen. I enjoy being with God's people. Yes, sir. And when I come to church and, and I go to church, I'm not there thinking, well, if we just get it done here quick, there's a TV show coming on, I can't miss. <laughs> Good grief, there's more to life than that. Yes, sir. But our Christianity is just so shallow today in so many people. That's why a lot of folks, man, they won't be in the house of God on Wednesday night. They won't be in the house of God on Sunday night. And they're only spasmodically there on Sunday morning, all right? But yet they tell you, yes, I'm saved. I know I'm a child of God. Well, something's wrong with their Christianity. They don't tell you their relationship with their God's not right. It's not right. We get away from Him. We, we get where we ought not to be. But man, it doesn't bother you. It bother you. I, I mean, there have been times, you know, over the last several years where I, I would be in the hospital or I'd be sick and a man in pain and I 
couldn't be in the house of God. I was, I was more miserable because it was Sunday than it would have been if it had been any other day of the week. Man, I wanted to be in the house of God. Wanted to be there. Uh, it does something for us. I don't understand people that's not. Hey, you say, how can it be that way? Because they get backslid. They get away from God. Here's Jonah. He decided, I'm going to run. You know what he found out? Running wasn't very fun. Let me say this to you. Jonah found out real quick you can't run away from what God wants you to do. Now he found it out real quick. I'm going to say this to you. It doesn't always happen that quickly. Now, I believe with all my heart, the Bible says in Numbers, be sure your sin will find you out, and you be sure it will find you out. Without a doubt. But it may not come real quickly. It may not be as quick as it was here with Jonah. You may set your sail in life and decide, I'm going to walk away from God. I'm not going to serve Him. I'm going to do what I want. And it may seem like it's smooth sailing for a while. Well, don't get overconfident. Don't get to pat yourself on the back real hard, okay? Because that day's coming. Put her down. That day is coming. It may take a while for it to come out, but sin will always find you out. Every time. Every time. Jonah was about to find out, hey, this run's not going to be any fun. He was just about to find that out. Hey, it was already miserable for everybody around him. You know what? It's always that way. You serve God, you quit, and the people around you are going to be miserable. You'll run life for them. They'll be miserable. But Jonah was about to find out it's going to get worse than I ever thought it could. Amen. Never thought it could be that bad. Hey, listen, you mark it down. <clears throat> you may be sitting here tonight and just on the verge of taking that step in the wrong direction. Just on the verge of, I mean, you're, you're, you're arguing out with you in your own mind. You're convincing yourself that you can get away with it. I'm going to tell you something. If you do that, you're going to find out it's going to extract a huge price from you. That running's not going to be fun. It's going to be painful. Oh, I, I plead with you, don't do it. You say, preacher, who, who's, who are you talking about? I don't know. It may not be right now. Maybe it's next month. Maybe it's next year. Boy, I, I want you to impact, be impacted by the Word of God. Amen. Realize, Jonah figured, I can do it. And everything seemed to go his way. I remind you from the earlier verses that he went, he found the ship. He had no problem finding the ship. Right. He was able to pay the fare. He was able to go in and go to sleep. But it didn't get him where he thought it would get him. Right. And it won't get you there either. Boy, don't let it happen to you. Don't let the devil convince you you can run and it'll be fun. It won't be. It won't be. Heavenly Father, Lord, would you just speak to us tonight? <coughs> Help us to realize our need. Help us to realize the truth of the Word of God. Lord, I know this is a Wednesday night crowd. But Lord, it's the Wednesday night crowd that can backslide too. We can get away from God. We can get the idea that we can run and it'll be all right. Lord, help that not to happen to us. Would you help us to see the truth of the Scripture tonight? Just help us to get a glimpse of it and see the life of Jonah, what happened to him. Or to not be pulled in to the devil's trap where he wants to run us. With the heads bowed and eyes closed tonight, I want to give you a time. We're not going to have any singing. We're not going to have any instruments played. But maybe God's dealing with you. Maybe you need to come. Maybe you need to come to the altar. If you do, I want you to come now. God's dealt with you. If, if he's dealing with you, then I want you to get up. I want you to come right now. There you go. Good. We're, we're not going we're not to be in a hurry. Uh, we want you to do I, I want God to use the, use the message, use the time. And 
You just come and talk to him, all right? You don't need to talk to me. You come and talk to him. Let him work in your life. Listen, you're here and things are right with you, but you pray for the folks that have come. You don't even need to look up and see who's come, but you just need to pray for the ones that have come. They have a need. They have a burden. Would you pray for them tonight while we wait quietly?